Oh, good evening, dear viewers. Wait, that's how we start? No, no razzle dazzle? No, Jody, you gotta put more effort into the scripts. All right, good evening, dear viewers. The Curse of Dracula. This serial part of the 1979 NBC series Cliffhangers. Cliffhangers, three continuing action-packed stories. Then it's Dracula 79. The Prince of Darkness has returned to cast his spell upon the unwary. But the evil Count will never rest in peace, for Kurt and Mary have sworn to end his immortal reign. Can goodness triumph, or will Dracula rule the day? Watch Tuesday on NBC. They don't call them cliffhangers for nothing. So, to revive the age-old tales of Count Dracula with a modern twist, let us delve into the dark and captivating world of this ambitious project. Airing from February 27th to May 1st, 1979, The Curse of Dracula was one of three serials featured on NBC's Cliffhangers, alongside Stop Susan Williams. Next, a beautiful newspaper reporter travels the globe to uncover a plot which will end the world. But when this ring of master spies finds she's hot on their trail, all they want to do is stop Susan Williams. And the secret empire. The secret empire. Marshal Jim Don arrives out of the past right into the future and discovers a secret city beneath the earth, filled with wonders and packed with thrills far beyond the dreams of mortal men. A city ruled by an evil emperor whose one goal is to control all mankind. Each segment aimed to offer a unique twist on the classic genres. Ah, critics had mixed reactions. Among the movie's low point, it seems to be made by and for people with no cheerfulness, no hope, no trust in human nature. Lee Winfrey of the Knight Rider newspapers praised Nori's seductive portrayal of Dracula, but noted the serious attempt to humanize the vampire amidst absurd context. Oh, you mean what, like teaching at a university? Wooing college students? No. no. But on the other hand, Fred L. Smith of the News and Courier criticized the serial's attempt at horror, likening it to a comedy rather than a true fright fest. Damnation! Well, I knew Jody, I guess both were right. Uh, uh, folks, if you grew up in the Gen X generation, this was truly terrifying. You were truly scared at this. It was an amazing show if you were a child in the 70s and 80s. Where were we? All, now, although the curse of Dracula concluded with the Dracula's demise, or so it seemed, its legacy did not entirely fade away. The serial was later edited into a made-for-TV movie and continued to influence subsequent portrayals of the character. Despite its initial cancellation, the serial's unique take on Dracula's mythos remains a fascinating chapter in television history. Now, Dracula was portrayed by Michael Nori. Dracula was reimagined as a tragic figure, burdened with remorse and regret. Kind of like his character from Flashdance. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, now what? No, oh yes, 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 yes. Oh, he was burdened with remorse and regret for his monstrous deeds. Now, his performance was intended to bring depth to the character. Oh, and sympathy. Oh, diverging from the traditional portrayal of Dracula as a mere predator. <laughs> Nori himself stated that the goal was to make Dracula a hero of sorts, making the audience empathize with his cursed existence, despite his heinous acts. No, oh, Jody, this sounds like a Chris Hansen special. Joining Nori were Stephen Jones as Kurt Van Helsing, the grandson of legendary vampire hunter Abraham Van Helsing, and Carol Baxter as Mary Gibbons, a grieving daughter seeking vengeance for her mother's death. Their performances added layers of conflict and emotion to the story, 
Kurt and Mary's quest to hunt Dracula was driven by personal loss and a quest for justice, making them compelling counterparts to Dracula's tragic figure. Ah, ha, <laughs> ha. Created by Kenneth Johnson, now Johnson best known for the Incredible Hulk and the Bionic Woman, the Curse of Dracula aimed to blend classic horror with modern sensibilities. Oh, modern sensibilities, Jody. This sounds like a lot of what's going on in today's current cinema. We, we just want good stories, folks. <laughs> now, Bilson's direction emphasized a serious tone, striving to avoid the campiness often associated with cliffhanger serials. The serial setting, a university in San Francisco, provided a contemporary backdrop for the timeless battle between good and evil. <laughs> Pretty sure it still is. <laughs> oh. The narrative unfolds as Dracula, hiding under the guise of a history professor, faces off against Kurt and Mary, who seek to stop his reign of terror. Wait, I thought he was done with the whole reign of terror, Jody. Folks, I haven't seen the show since it originally aired in 1979. Now, the serial was known for its dramatic cliffhangers, with each episode ending on a tense note from Dracula's fiery confrontation with Kurt and Mary to the dramatic escape and ongoing battle. The tension kept viewers eagerly awaiting the next installment. However, despite its ambitious storytelling and strong performances, the serial struggled with ratings. Ah, as we conclude our deep dive into the curse of Dracula, we see how this ambitious project sought to redefine the Dracula legend while grappling with the constraints of television storytelling. Oh, meaning no blood and no... Well, no intention of that kind. <laughs> its impact, though, perhaps overshadowed by other productions. Dracula, starring Frank Langella. Provides a unique and intriguing glimpse into the evolution of the vampire genre. Until our next exploration into the world of horror, I'm signing off from Coffin Talk. Now do remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more eerie insights and discussions.